Hello, I'm glad you're here again. This is Jennifer. Now, I filmed this video a few weeks ago, but I'm just getting around to sharing it. This video shows how you can take a large die and use it creatively to create fun folds and shaped cards. Now, I used a butterfly today because I'm a big fan of butterflies, but you could do this with any large die shape, circle, oval, rectangle, star, whatever you may have. You could even trace your own shape and cut it out if you prefer. I'm using the Spellbinders Butterfly Card Creator die set. Now, I used this and a few of these other products in a video a few weeks ago, which I'll link to up on the top right here, so be sure to check it out for more ideas with the same products. Now, the largest butterfly in this set is actually five by seven inches, so it's great for a large card, or you can use part of it on a smaller card. I will be doing both today. There are also all of these other additional dies in here that you can use to decorate whatever you make. This is one of those die sets that really gives you a lot of bang for your buck because you can use those large butterflies for shape cards or whatever, and you can use the flower dies with it or separately. And Spellbinders does a really good job on packing a lot in their die sets and having a good price point. I don't work for them. I just think they do a great job with it. Then I'm also using the Spellbinders So Many Butterfly Die Sets. This has a bunch of different size butterflies. You can see they all nest in each other, which would be a great card right there. And there are different butterfly body sizes. I also use this in my previous video, so check that out for more ideas. But really today is about that first die set. I use this one and some other things just for adding on some interest. All right, let's start creating some cards. I'm first going to show you how I created three unique card bases, then I'll show you how I decorated them. I'm making that white large butterfly first. I cut that using the smaller of the two large butterfly dies in the card creator set I showed you at the beginning. Notice there's texture to that. I did this by using an embossing folder twice. So on the front and the back of this white cardstock die cut, I'm rubbing a little bit of moisture with my baby wipe. You can use a wet cloth for this. I just want to give it a little bit of moisture so that it embosses better. I'm putting that half of the butterfly into an embossing folder. This one's from Spellbinders. I love how big it is, so you can use it on a large card but I'm only doing half the butterfly so that I could have the pattern kind of facing in on both sides, which you'll see in a moment. So I have the other half of the butterfly hanging out from the embossing folder. I ran that through and look at that cool texture. Now I'm repeating the process, but on the other half of the butterfly. You could have just put the entire butterfly into the folder, but I like the look of the pattern facing one way on one side and the other way on the other, kind of pointing in towards the body. So now I'll run this through my die cut machine and we have the whole background covered and it looks amazing. Now you can do this with whatever die cut machine you have. I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum today. Now I'm putting Gina K liquid adhesive on the back of this and gluing it to a gray butterfly that I cut with the larger butterfly die. This is Simon Says Stamp Fog cardstock, which is my favorite super light gray, and it just adds a little bit of contrast between those two layers. So this is our card front that we've created so far. We need to add a card back to it for the shaped card design. There are many ways you can do this, but the way I'm showing you definitely gives the cleanest results, at least I think so, and it's very easy. I cut another of the larger butterfly, the same size as the gray that we used on the front, and this is cut from white cardstock, but you can use whatever you want. I'm putting it on my scoreboard and scoring about a half inch from the top of the butterfly wings. Now this can be absolutely any shape you want. It could be a star, a circle, a rectangle, a square, anything. You want to score about a half inch from the top of that shape and then kind of fold back and forth a bit. Then you will flatten those little flaps out, put adhesive above those score lines, and then lay your other shape right on top of it. This little hinge that you created with those two score lines will create the card back and allow this card to open and close. I do recommend using a very strong liquid adhesive or double-sided tape to add those together so you can be sure they stay put. Now while that dries, we'll set this aside and we'll come back and finish this shape card in a little bit. But next let's go to our second card design that is a little bit different than a normal card using that same large butterfly die. 
I think this version is my favorite of all three because I really like a design where the front of the card is shaped. So the front flap is the butterfly. Now for this, I cut the large butterfly from pink cardstock. And I also have a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I am positioning the butterfly so the top edge of the butterfly touches the top of the white cardstock and the bottom edge of the butterfly touches the bottom corner of the cardstock. That's not that important, but I feel like that maximizes the size of the front of our card. While holding those together in that position, I'm flipping it over and laying it down onto my scoreboard. This way I can score right along that white cardstock edge. So I'm scoring the butterfly right along the white cardstock edge and then I will fold there. That flap that is folded back will wrap around the white cardstock piece. So I'm putting strong liquid adhesive along that folded edge and I will glue that to the back of our white cardstock piece. So this pink butterfly, the front flap, will form the front flap of our card instead of a traditional folded card, which I think really makes it special. You could still use a traditional card inside of this if you prefer, but there is plenty of room behind this butterfly wing to write your personal message. So I think it's fun to just have it this way. Now I want the back of the card to look clean. You could leave it as is if you wanted. So I'm gluing another piece of white cardstock back there of the same size four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Remember, you can do this with other shapes. In fact, I have done a card like this with a large balloon, and I will link to that video if you want to look for another idea. Okay, now I have a third card design using these large butterfly dies. This one is five by seven inches, and it's a little bit different than anything I've really shown in a video, so I'm excited to share it. So this has a rectangle card back and the front is that butterfly, but the way it opens is a little bit different than what we've done so far. For this, I have cut two of the largest butterfly sizes. They're about five by seven. On one of them, I'm putting two score lines towards the top of the butterfly wings. Before we only did one, this time we're doing two. The first is about a quarter inch from the top of the wings. So I'll do it on the top of both of the wings. So score line about a quarter inch from the top. The next is three quarters of an inch from the top. And I'll score that on both. So we have two score lines right there at the top of the wings. I'll fold along the first score line backwards. And I'll reinforce that by pressing it with the bone folder. Then I'll score the other way towards me for the other score line. So we have like a little mini accordion fold at the top of both of these butterfly wings. If you have a circle or flower, you may only need to do this on the top of one edge of the die cut. It just depends on the shape. Now I'm putting liquid adhesive only above the first score line on those little quarter inch flaps. I will then lay the other die cut right on top of it and will flatten that down. So only the top quarter inch of that back die cut is glued to this front die cut. Now I know this looks a little bit weird, but I promise it'll work really well when we turn it into a card. Okay, so now we can add this onto a card panel, which is five by seven inches. So I'm putting liquid adhesive along the back of this butterfly under the bottom score line. So only in that bottom portion, not on the flaps above. You wanna be generous with your adhesive so that this stays secure. I'm gluing this onto a white cardstock piece, which is a little bit less than five by seven inches. And that will press down until it's secure. Once it's dry, you can test it out. Watch how this flips up. And you can see because we did that extra score line up there, that it's able to flip up without having to have any score line showing on the front butterfly. This creates a really easy to open card and it keeps the front butterfly very clean and smooth. Remember, you can do this with circles, butterflies, squares, stars, whatever die cut shape you have, but it really works well with this butterfly. So now we have these three really unique cards. We have the shaped butterfly that's five by seven, the card with the butterfly flap on the front that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and then this last card that has the butterfly on the front flap, and it is five by seven. Now we need to turn these into cards by adding embellishments and sentiments, and that's what we're going to do next. I like to create multiple cards at once. These three cards look very different, but I created them all at the same time using some of the same die cuts and features, which saves me time in the end. 
Off screen, I did a bunch of die cutting from flower dies to create layered flower die cuts that we can add to all of these cards. I used a light, medium, and dark color of peach cardstock to create a bunch of layered flowers. And these flowers are mostly flowers from that card creator die set I showed you at the beginning. But you can use any flower die cuts you may have. Spellbinders has a lot of really nice ones in a variety of sizes. For me, this process of creating these layered die cuts is very therapeutic. I enjoy doing this. And it's helpful to have a sticky tool like this Trinity Stamps pickup stick that has an end that will pick up your die cuts and place them right where you want it. It's a great tool to have and I use it on almost every card. Now let's finish off this first card, the shape five by seven card. I cut a gray butterfly that's a bit smaller using the other butterfly die set. I'm putting dimensional tape behind the tips of the wings, but regular liquid adhesive along the body. This gives a little variation in the dimension and makes the wing tips stick up a bit on the front of the card. Little things like this can make a big difference in the end. I then chose some sentiments from Spellbinders. I wanted to add some foil to these. So I used the Spellbinders Glimmer Sentiments Plates and Die Set. This has happy birthday, thanks, and hello, and then the coordinating dies to go along with it. This is great to add to any card, and you can use whatever color of foil you want. If you do not have a foil machine, I'll link to a video up here that shows other ways you can use them. Here I have my Spellbinders Glimmer Foil Machine, and it's warm and ready to go. I have a scrap piece of printer paper here. You don't have to use that, but I find it helpful when I'm using small hot foil plates. I'm putting a little tape runner on the back of my small hot foil plate and sticking it to the paper. The reason I do this is it keeps it from moving around and I get crisp results. Again, you don't have to. Over this, I'm laying face down a scrap of black glimmer foil. I will then put a piece of cardstock on top, something smooth. I like to use hammer mill cardstock, which I'll link below. Then I'll put my two plates that come with the glimmer machine. I'll push the timer button, and once it stops flashing, I take all of those plates out and I feed it through my Spellbinders Platinum machine. This is a die cut machine that will provide the pressure. There are different foil machines to use depending on the die cut machine you have. You need to check with the manufacturer. I will link here to a more complete video about the Glimmer machine. It is so easy to use and great for creating shine on your cards. I then use the coordinating die to cut out the word thanks and that black has beautiful shine to it. Now I have some layered flowers here and I'm adding the body for the butterfly. Again, that's included in the die set. And we can just assemble some flowers right there on the front of the card behind the word thanks. Now when creating a cluster of flowers, I like to start with uh, like a triangle of flowers. So notice here I have three larger flowers and I'm kind of forming a triangle, a visual triangle between those three. Then I will build out from there. I find that that is a great way to start and really makes it easy. So you can see I have the three flowers forming the triangle and I'm just tucking some leaves in and underneath them. When I glued those flowers down, I just put strong liquid adhesive behind the center of the flower so I could easily lift up the petals and tuck some leaves behind. Now, I like to keep all these leaves for multiple cards. So I do a bunch of die cut leaves and then I have them ready to go for any card. So I have a bunch of different shapes. They're all from Spellbinders. And I can easily lift up the petals of my flowers and tuck them in wherever I need. I have the three flowers forming the triangle and then all the leaves kind of stick out from there and connect the three flowers. That thanks is not glued there yet, it's just laying there. So I can see what it'll look like in the end and then we'll glue it down. I tend to go overboard on my cards and add a lot of die cuts. I like that look, but you could definitely do less if you wanted to. I also like to cut up my leaf die cuts. So I have single leaves that I can tuck behind my flowers here and there. So don't be afraid to cut them up to get different looks. For my thanks, I really want it to really be strong so it'll stand up nicely in the mail. So I use the coordinating die for the word thanks and cut it two more times from white cardstock and glued that behind our foiled thanks image. So that's a very strong, thick die cut and it'll hold up nicely there in the center. I also added three smaller flowers that also form another triangle and those kind of fill in some of the spaces. 
So now you can see that this card stands up nicely on its own thanks to those little hinges we created on the top of the wings. And this is a really bold card. It's five by seven. It's nice and big, plenty of room to add anything we want on the inside. I plan to just put a personal message, but you could do anything with this. You could do more flowers on the inside. It's totally up to you. I do have a silver five by seven envelope to match it nicely, and I'll link to that source below. And I also added some Trinity stamps, something new pearls. They're white with a little bit of shine to them. And I scattered those around our little bouquet. Look at all of that layering detail. I love putting those flowers together. And then we have the detail that we added to our white large shape. And that we did with an embossing folder. So this is again, a big five by seven bold card, which really makes a statement and is so much fun to create. You can definitely do it with smaller dies also. Okay, next let's finish off our other five by seven card. This one I went overboard with the flowers, but I really like the look and I think it's definitely worth the time, but you could do a smaller cluster of flowers if you want. Now the sentiment on this one is really fun. It is using the Spellbinders banner, glimmer, plate, and die set. So this has some hot foil plates and then coordinating dies that work together to create a banner effect. There are many ways you can arrange this to create different banner looks. I'll be sharing one with you today. I have my glimmer machine and it is warm and ready. I am temporarily adhering each of our hot foil plates to a piece of scrap paper, printer paper, something thin, and that will just kind of hold them in place as we do this. Again, you could just put your hot foil plates directly onto the glimmer machine. I just find this gives me better results with my machine. I'm putting black glimmer foil face down onto the hot foil plates. And on top of that, I'm putting a piece of smooth cardstock. I like to use hammer mill. Once again, it's linked below, but you can use whatever cardstock you have. Then on top of that, I put the two plates that come with the machine. I'll press the timer button. When the light stops flashing on the timer button, I take all of those plates out and run it through my die cut machine. This will provide the pressure. I know you're probably seeing more and more of foiling in videos that you watch, crafty videos. That's because there are more and more hot foil plates coming out and more ways to use your machine. So crafters are having a lot of fun with it. I know it's not for everyone, but I think you'll be seeing more and more. So if you're on the edge, keep that in mind. More companies are creating these foil plates. Okay, now I'm using the coordinating dies to cut these out. I use some sentiments from the banner set I just showed you. Some are from some other Spellbinder sets. While you're creating one, you might as well create more. So do a bunch of foiling at once. I'll be using those banner sentiments. I want my banners to be a little narrow, so I'm going to cut them shorter. So you see here, I'm just cutting each of these banner sentiments a little bit shorter. You could leave as is if you want to. There are many ways you can use these. You can see I die cut a bunch of additional pieces from that banner set. There are those dies included in it. I like to layer up my sentiments once again. It makes them stronger, and that way I can glue them on top of my flowers and it'll hold up nicely in the mail. So let's create our little banner sentiment here. Again, there are many ways to do this. You can look at their website for other suggestions. I just wanted to have sending thanks and have those horizontal on our card, just going straight across with the rest of the banners kind of sticking off from there. So I trimmed it a little bit shorter because my, I trimmed my sentiment shorter. So you'll see me glue it down and then trim off the excess. You know me, I like to kind of change up how my products are used so I can get different looks. So now I have this sending thanks banner and it's a little more narrow than it was intended and it'll fit nicely there in the center of our butterfly. Next, I cut from gold cardstock a butterfly body and I'm sliding that in to our banner. I like how it looks like it's wrapping around the body there so it's really part of the card. Next, I'm filling in that pink butterfly with lots of flower die cuts. I think this is fun. It's like putting together a puzzle. I started with two large flowers there in the middle and some little leaves tucked behind. Then I'm going to fill in all of the space on that pink with little die cuts. In the little nooks and crannies, I'll put the tiny flowers and I'll fill the bigger areas with the bigger flowers. It took me about 10 or 15 minutes to do that, but I love the look. I had the flowers already assembled, so it wasn't too bad. Now I'm putting our banner sentiment right there in the middle along with the body. 
Keep in mind, if you want to, you could instead glue those flowers so they're kind of hanging off the edge of the butterfly and just trim off the excess. But I arrange them so they kind of fit in the butterfly edges. Okay, so let's take a look at our completed card. Again, it is five by seven. And remember, this has that fun opening where we did the double score line at the top. So it's able to open easily, but the front of the card looks very smooth. Here you can see all the detail that we added. I did add some Trinity stamps, something new white pearls into the openings on the butterfly, just for some added shine and dimension. When you open the card front, there's plenty of room there to write a personal message on the pink butterfly on the inside. You could even stamp and decorate that if you wanted to. This card design works really well with this butterfly shape, but you can also do this with a circle, a balloon, a star, an oval, whatever you may have on hand, or you can cut your own shape. All right, now let's finish off the four and a quarter by five and a half inch card that has the partial butterfly flap on the front. Now I have some floral die cuts left over, the layered flowers we created. And I also created a body from the same color of pink cardstock. And I glued that right to the front. Once again, I will start with three large flowers, tuck some leaves under those, and then build around it. I really like to add things in odd numbers and three is a great place to start. Once I'm happy with the little bouquet of flowers, I have a thanks sentiment. This was gold foiled using the Spellbinders Glimmer Sentiment set I showed you at the beginning, and I used the coordinating die to cut it out. I like that the gold foil adds sparkle, but it's not too bold that it distracts from everything else. There's plenty of room behind the butterfly wings to write your personal sentiment, and you could stamp in there if you wanted to. So the overall size of this is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I did add some Trinity Stamp Something New Pearls. Again, I use those a lot. They have a little bit of iridescent shine to them, so they catch the light nicely. This type of shaped card front is a favorite of mine. Again, I have a link up here to the top right to a balloon card that I did in a similar design if you want to check that out. All right, so I hope this inspired you to rethink how you look at those large dies. There are many companies that have large nesting dies like butterflies, balloons, circles, and more. Try using the largest die from those sets to create one of these cards. If you're interested in the particular supplies I use, they are linked below in my YouTube description. You can go to my blog and bookmark these individual cards or video for future reference. I'm hoping that's helpful to you all. And I will be back with another card video soon. In the meantime, I have a couple of other videos linked here at the end that you can check out if you're interested. Thank you for watching. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you soon.